Okay, and welcome back. This is Mr. Harold, and I'm here today to talk to you about the body paragraph. Now, if you watched my first video, you saw that I used different colors to show the different parts of the paragraph that you need. If you've already seen the key, you can skip ahead just a little bit and get to the actual meat of the body paragraph. But if you missed it, let me take you through the key again. Uh, when you're going through this, we're going to have several different sections. Now the first two, general ideas, historical context, these aren't going to come up in your body paragraph. This has already been given, generally, in the introduction. So your paper in the body paragraph is probably just going to have the things that come after that. You'll have plot information. Every now and then you'll need to give a little background on the story of Beowulf itself. You'll have a transition when you're going from point to point. These will happen two, three, four times throughout your paper. You need to say what your topic and your thesis are. This should come at the beginning and the end of each body paragraph. And then finally, your quote and your explanation. Now you'll notice how I made the quote in gray and the explanation in yellow. A lot of people think that the quote is the most important part, but really it's the least important. The quote is there to give backup, and if the quote's not there, you have a big problem. But really, your paper is going to survive or it's going to fail based on that yellow explanation. The explanation is the most important part. So let me skip ahead. We looked at the introduction last time. Let me skip ahead to this body paragraph. Now again, I'm not going to read it to you. You can take a look at that on your own, either by reading what's on the screen or if you're watching this on the Game Lab, just click the link below and you can open a version for yourself. Let me pause for a second and let you read this part of it. Hopefully you pause there. And now let me skip ahead to the rest of it. And let me skip ahead to the final bit here. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you're not just going to wait for me to read it to you because you're going to be disappointed. I'm not. So let's take a look. Now this paragraph begins with a topic sentence. The fates of the characters show religious ties to Anglo-Saxons. Looking back at the student's thesis, she's going to talk about the Anglo-Saxon culture through fates, values, and rituals of the characters. So she's going to spend the first paragraph talking only about fates. Now she immediately gets into some background, some plot summary. She spends the next three or four sentences talking about Grendel, how Grendel is the descendant of Cain, and gives a little bit of the backstory there. Some of this is from the novel and some of this is information that she gathered through research or perhaps just her own information. Notice just how much time she spends setting up the quote. Finally, we get to the actual quote itself. And notice the quote's about a sentence long, which is a good length to have. Uh, too long and you risk getting the reader bored and confused, and too short you risk not saying enough. Afterwards, she follows it with an explanation. So she's trying to show here that the narrator describes Grendel as being banished by God. She gives an example of that, and then she explains what this quote means. The town sees Grendel as a beast. This representation shows that because Grendel is tied to Cain, he is rejected by society. So she's able to, in that explanation very quickly, to make a connection to the quote and then a connection back to the thesis. After that, in blue here, we have a transition to the next part. We have more plot summary, another quote, and another yellow explanation where she again takes that quote and ties it back to our purple thesis at the top. Now the paper ends with not a quote, but some more specifics. She goes into some more plot summary with a specific example, and she explains how that specific example is able to back up the thesis. So you notice you don't always need quotes. Sometimes you have a quote before an explanation, and sometimes just some specific plot summary, like here when she's talking about how Beowulf dies at the end and is buried with his treasure. The end of the paragraph includes a purple topic sentence that's been reworded into a conclusion sentence. It talks about the idea of fate, Anglo-Saxon culture, and Christianity, and brings it all back to the thesis. Mm -hmm. Now I noticed I talked really fast through that, and that's because the expectation is that you will actually read this. When you write your paper, you need to make sure that all of these elements are present. If you do that, you'll be in great shape. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you'll check out the conclusion video as well. And we'll see you out there.